We're here at the big 5G event in Denver, Colorado. Joining me today from Acedia is Richard Piazzantini, and we're going to talk about private 5G networks. Richard, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. It's great to be here. This is actually my hometown. Good. Uh, so it's nice to be doing a in-life real <laughs> event in my home state. Yeah, so. it's, 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 it's nice to uh, see see people in real life at, a, at an event again. Three-dimensional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely definitely helps with, uh, with with making connections and um, and and also getting to the bottom of some, uh, you know, tech topics that we've been, uh, you know, wondering about and talking mm. about. So one of the big ones here at this event is uh, private 5G networks. Mm. Let's talk about uh, what drives the demand for private 5G networks and what some of the benefits of those networks are. That's a great question, and uh, one that I may have some uh, non-standard views on. Oh, great! As an example. Um, many times, my customers will ask me, you know, uh, Richard, what do you think about uh, the use of, as an example, a private 5G network as opposed to Wi-Fi mm -hmm. or Wi-Fi six? Yeah. And uh, you know, while I will answer the question, I will then add on, you know, to a certain extent, that's the wrong question. Mm. If you find yourself, an enterprise finds itself asking the question, okay, should I pick this access technology versus that access technology? Um, I would argue then the answer is quite obvious. You should probably go Wi-Fi 6. Uh, the right question from my perspective is, what is the use case that I'm trying to execute? Does it involve uh, a high performance application of some kind? That with current technologies, I can't, I can't meet the needs of that high performance application, okay. sure. and that question really is very industry specific. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very enterprise specific, obviously, and it combines a few sets of technologies that, in my opinion, will always be together. So, if you need to deploy a I'll just give you an example, a high performance application where, as an example, industrial AR. Okay. Right? So imagine yourself in a Rolls Royce factory, uh, you know, you have, uh, you know, multi hundred thousand dollar engines that the technicians are working on and they're massively complicated machines. Mm -hmm. Historically, they'd be dragging along a, uh, you know, a cart full of manuals that tell them what they should, should be doing. Just a sheer workforce productivity improvement can be gained by industrial AR. So you right. take all of that information, give them a, a, a visor of some kind, you know, there's many different types available now, um, and you present to them the information that they need in real time, perhaps using machine learning and uh, machine vision systems to identify parts and show them what needs to get done. If you think about that use case, uh, the driver is actually the AR application itself. Right. Then that leads to a question around, well, okay, what access technology would I use uh, in order to facilitate the overall use case? Yeah. And in my opinion, uh, uh, 5G access technologies and concepts around orchestrated workloads, sometimes called edge, okay, people talk about edge a lot, mm -hmm. I like to stay a little bit away from that, from that language when I can. Mm -hmm. But the idea that you have to orchestrate where a high-performance workload goes, uh -huh. those technologies live together. Right. Yeah. Okay, so that makes sense, and and uh, it leads perfectly to the next question, which is, you know, if it's use case specific, then what industries would benefit the most mm -hmm. from like a private 5G network? Uh, that's a great question. Interestingly enough, we have a uh, exceeding has several uh, very large SI partners. Um, and they have uh, obviously very large practices around certain verticals. Okay. And uh, one of the discussions that we were having, in the short answer to your question, is I think that uh, Industry 4.0, it's a little bit generic, mm -hmm. um, but really the idea of uh, uh, capital intense manufacturing environments mm -hmm. are really the sweet spot for the combination of, just going back to the prior point, yeah. um, 5G-based private network technologies and orchestrated workloads in the construct of the edge or local computing is probably more accurate. Okay. Um, again, just another example. Imagine you know you are a uh, automobile manufacturing plant, 
and you have an installed base of uh, AGVs, but they're, you know, each one of these AGVs might be a couple of hundred thousand dollars, right? And it was designed with technologies five, ten years ago, but it's still it's still a productive capital piece of equipment, and it's a yeah. very expensive one. Right. Yeah. So, as an example, instead of replacing that very expensive piece of capital equipment, you want to augment it. Mm -hmm. You want to you want to implement uh, computer vision systems. Right. right? with relatively low cost cameras that you can add to it. You want to give it uh, autonomy to a certain extent. You could spend a lot of money trying to put enough GPU processing horsepower onto that piece of capital equipment. But the other way to do it, which is really what private networks and high performance workload uh, orchestration brings in, you augment the device at the lowest possible cost, and then you offload. You offload the processing in the visual field. Uh, you offload the decision making around uh, the uh, autonomy. And uh -huh. if that gives you a five percent increase in productivity in that manufacturing plant, yeah, those technologies will pay for themselves in a second. So, mm. so capital intensive manufacturing is really, I believe, the is going to be the sweet spot for private network. Yeah, that's also one of the. It's it's one of the use cases that lends itself most to that kind of hyper automation. You know, that, 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 that you want to take as many human errors or, you know, and and as much downtime out of the equation as you possibly can. Absolutely. Um, so to co to contrast it a little bit, um, uh, what are the current use cases for private mobile networks? So that would be like in the four G, mm. LTE sort of space, and then how might those change with the advent of five G? It's a great question. Um, in this one, I wouldn't say I have a great answer in the construct that if you have a use case that is being addressed by 4G, 4G based private network, that yeah. is, um, I, I don't know that there's actually a reason, especially right now, while we're still, we're still in a little bit of the teething period of some of the foundational technologies right. uh, around private networks based on 5G technologies. Right, yeah. Um, I would argue you probably don't need to make that change. Mm. Um, you see, as an example, one of the sessions today, uh, I, uh, and I unfortunately can't remember the gentleman's name, but he runs a police force, the yeah. IT uh, division of, a, of a, a police department. Right. And he was talking about their use cases. You know, one of the examples was uh, licensed plate readers. Yeah. Okay, we're all running on uh, 4G LTE modems. Sure. Uh, et cetera. And if you think about that use case, uh, the processing of the plate happens in the reader, and it spits out, as an example, a character set, which is the license plate. Well, that's inherently a low bandwidth. Um, yes, it's a mobile application, clearly, but it's a, it's a low bandwidth one. It doesn't compare right. even, it, it doesn't even compare as an example, in terms of the load on the network, uh -huh. to a voice conversation. Right, yeah, right? yeah. There is no real need to upgrade that. Mm -hmm. Now, the contrary is, if you want to turn every police officer body cam into a license plate reader, mm -hmm. instead of replacing the hundreds of thousands of body cams, what you would do is you would stream that video 5G technologies, right. you would stream that video to a edge compute location that then would do the visual processing that would otherwise be done locally. So again, it's a little, it's a little bit, of, you know, again, yeah, you can see I keep coming back to this theme, yeah. right? Yeah. Unless you have a need for high performance workload um, orchestration, mm -hmm. you don't really need the kinds of core technologies that are brought to you by 5G explicitly ultra low uh, latency, reliability, right. et cetera. To, to many people who aren't technologists, now I'm a, I'm a nerd uh, <laughs> by nature, uh, and they ask me, well, what is 5G? And, I, and, and my simple answer to them is, uh, and there's a lot more detail to the story, but basically it's the first public wide area network uh, mobile technology that can turn that radio access network into a well-behaved ethernet cable. Mm -hmm. And if you start to think about it that way, it then then you un, kind of unleash the creativity of the people that are looking for those new applications. Right. 
Right. Yeah, and that, and that opens up the the, the, dis, uh, the discussion even more about what use cases make sense. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about um, uh, security. Mm. Um, so what in 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 private networks, what deployment models offer enterprises the, the, the most security or the most secure uh, networks? And then, you know, what are some of those considerations when you're talking about uh, private 5G networks? Mm, absolutely. Um, so specifically from a security perspective, mm -hmm. the radio access layer that comes with a 5G-based private network is about as secure as any access technology mm -hmm. itself can be. And largely, a CIO can look at the access network itself as at least as secure as the rest of their infrastructure. Now, we could have a separate conversation about what does a proper security posture look like in an enterprise independent of 5G, but if you assume that there's a strong security posture already, the 5G access network itself does not create incremental uh, threat surfaces. However, the connected devices themselves do. Mm -hmm. So one of the other use cases is massive IoT. We were discussing the, um, the I'm gonna augment my AGVs with cameras. Right. It's well, IoT. you cannot open a uh, web page um, or a news feed today without hearing about yet another zero day attack on a relatively low powered IOT device that then gets turned into an access point for cyber attackers. As a consequence, the deployment of private 5G technologies for the use cases that we've been talking about will involve devices that cannot run themselves strong endpoint security. In other words, they can't be as compliant to the general IT security posture. Mm -hmm. And when that's the case, uh, we believe that it's a CIO considering those technologies and those kinds of endpoints needs to make sure that their security posture includes concepts of network detection and response. Very simply for the audience, you have endpoint security, you have firewall uh, security models. NDRs sit on top, they watch all of the traffic across the network and they look for anomalous behavior. Um, that becomes a key requirement when you are deploying it, particularly these industrial use cases. So, as an example, at Exceedian, uh, we use network detection technologies in order to provide service assurance. Okay. And one of the things that we should talk about is the you know, what are the technology requirements to actually even make a private network work right. in, yeah. in 5G? Yeah. But as an example, our uh, network detection systems that we use for performance mm -hmm. are dual purpose. They allow us to then as well provide a NDR security platform. And I would just suggest, regardless of whether the idea is to use Exceedian for service assurance in these models, the CIO needs to think about both performance and security for the reasons that we've talked about. Okay, and uh, I think your your uh, suggestion actually is a great last question, which is what technologies do enterprises and service providers need to have in order to take advantage of uh, the, the capabilities of 5G? Absolutely. So I'll separate my answer uh, into two, two very high level segments. Okay. One for the enterprise, I'll sure. start with the enterprise. When you think about the complexity, so what happens in a private network is whether the CIO is aware of it or not, they have decided typically to use a cloud native network function. It's gonna run, you can think of it just as an application inside of their IT department or IT environment that's responsible for managing a physical layer network. Now, Cloud native technologies were never designed to operate at the levels of uh, precision that are required to run a physical network. You're talking uh, not millisecond, you're talking microsecond decisions that are happening in software. Yeah. So when an, a CIO wants to run those network functions as part of this private network, he really needs to be thinking about next generation service assurance because making a cloud native application work with that physical layer is a 10x complexity. And one of the examples I've used with my enterprise customers is, take the most complex application you're running, you know, the most demanding application you're running in your IT uh, environment today. 
the performance requirements to make a private network network function at microservice is at least 10x more demanding than anything else you have in your enterprise. And so you really need to rethink what the performance of your applications just generally, right. um, how you manage them mm -hmm. inside, of the, uh, inside of the enterprise. For service provider, um, service providers obviously have been running access networks forever. Forever, okay? yeah. However, if you look at it historically, the way, uh, and I'll just use mobile networks as an example, the way they've been built is essentially you bought steel, compute, software from one company, right. they shipped you something, you lock it down, you connect it effectively with switching and uh, routing infrastructure, but right. think of it as Ethernet. Yeah. And you have a kind of a consistent chain all the way from the radio to the, uh, to the uh, for all intents and purposes, the public internet. Mm -hmm. And that's three or four blocks. They only upgrade or change maybe once a year, twice a year, and it's a very controlled process. Think about deploying a cloud-native 5G network where you have one dimension of complexity. You now have effectively three. You've got white box, uh, or commodity compute hardware platforms have their own idiosyncrasies. You have a carrier cloud virtualization environment that has its own yeah. uh, dimensions of complexity. Right. And then you have those same network functions that I was talking about before, which are running on top to make the access network work. And here's the beauty or the pain of this problem. They are all continuously updating themselves and changing. It is right. a non-static environment. Right. Historically, they were static environments. You would probe at certain points, yeah. and you'd say, okay, I'm gonna reconstruct what's happening inside the box. That model of server assurance does not work anymore. Right. And so you need an extra generation service assurance that's oriented around the idea that you have to inspect all dimensions of the infrastructure, use ML to correlate uh, infrastructure uh, KPIs against real end user experience. Because in the end, that's actually what matters. And right. an end user, just for the record, is not necessarily a person. An right. end user can be another piece of software. Be a machine. It could be a machine. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, that's great. Okay, Richard from Acedian, um, you've given us a lot to think about in terms of private 5G networks, mm -hmm. use cases, scenarios, and also deployment realities for both service mm -hmm. providers and enterprises. Thanks so much for giving us a moment of your time today. I appreciate it. Yeah, I really appreciate it. It was nice meeting you. Take care.